The crisis rocking the People's Democratic Party may have worsened with some members of the National Working Committee writing to the national chairman of the party, Dr. Yocha Ayu, and informing him of their decision to return the housing allowance paid into their account from the party's coffers. The development came a few days after a media report claimed that members of the PDP NWC were miffed with uh, moved over alleged depletion of a 10 billion naira uh, that the party made from the sales of nomination forms. Now, the River State Governor, Nyesen Wiki, had also accused Yocha Ayu of collecting the sum of 1 billion naira from an unnamed presidential candidate in Lagos. The report had claimed that Ayu, in a bid to pacify the National Working Committee members, paid the sum of 28 million naira to each of the members. Well, joining us to discuss this is Katch Onunuju. He's a public affairs analyst and an economist. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, Dr. Katch. Thank you very much for having me. So here we are again, still talking about the ongoing trials and tribulations within the PDP. And this time is not about the Southern Caucus, but it's about monies being returned to the chairman. Explain to us again exactly what is going on here, because Nigerians are a bit confused. Well, it started with members sitting there to say that they have noticed that their accounts were credited with money they don't understand, arising from their complaints against the chairman. And then uh, when we, we sat down and they sat down, they said, if money paid into your accounts, you don't understand this, don't keep it so that it does not become a problem for you. So they made their reform yesterday and we're now beginning to find out that the chairman may have a lot more things to explain than what we're hearing everywhere. There have been accusations by people, uh, especially Governor Wiki and others, that the chairman has fraudulently been doing things that he shouldn't do, that the party's national secretary, which is under construction, has not yet been completed. So how come the chairman is sharing money instead of using such money to actually fix the National Secretariat, which is an ongoing project. So those members were employed upon by those who knew to return the money. They returned the money yesterday, and we want now want to hear the full details of reasons for such bribes given to members without request, and why the chairman did that. That's where we are at, as I speak to you right now. But of course, the party has come out to, um, you know, debunk this, saying that um, uh, there was no swindling or there was no um, uh, money drama per se. They were trying to say that this is all just made up. But then there are those who are saying that this is a, a ploy by people from, of course, the uh, presidential or rather Governor Wike's camp to sabotage. Uh, the presidential campaign of uh, Atiku Abubakar and, of course, uh, the chairman, Yocha Ayu. This has nothing to do with the presidential campaign. It has to do with Mr. Ayocha Ayu. A lot of folks have claimed that Ayocha Ayu should resign, that we believe him to be very corrupt, we believe him to be very fraudulent, we believe him to be unfit. So he says no. And we're now finding out that internally in the party, there are those who also believe the same thing. And the national vice chairman in the different geopolitical zones have now come forward to say that they have records where the chairman tried to bribe them to silence them in regards to a lot of things that the chairman have been doing that are simply unacceptable. So those rhetoric you hear are different. Let me give you a comparison. The other day on television when we are listening to Mr. Pitobi, when they asked him about corruption, he said, look, an issues of corruption hold me responsible. I will deal with it. If I don't deal with it, hold me responsible. So now we have an issue of corruption in the PDP. We're now looking at what the party will do, what Mr. Tika Bubaka will do. If he says he unified the, part, the party, how can you unify the party if the party is currently divided? If there is issue of corruption, is he going to also cover it and accept them? 
The party is currently divided. We're asking that Ayu goes. If Ayu says it's not going to go, we're showing him reasons why he should go. If he doesn't want to go, well, as you can see right now, the National Working Commission of the party is currently undergoing an experience and an infant. We're not going to have such chairman. And you should resign and go if you want peace. For mm. the party to be together, right now as I speak to you, our party is split into four different factions. You have the faction with Kwan Kwasu. You have the other faction with Mr. Pitobi. You also have another faction with the Southern Caucus, led by Mr. Wike and others. And you have the remnants with the chairman. And you know very well, every house divided can never stand. The PDP today is torn into shreds of four different parts. And we believe Mr. Ayochayu is not fit to lead the party. And that's why we're asking that he resign and allow us chance to fix our party. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure, but I want to be clear uh, from some of the things that you've said. First, you're saying that um, Atiku Abubakar says he's uniting the party and he has to do something. But he's just a presidential um, candidate of the party. He's not the chairman of the party. Neither is he the National Working Committee um, chairman or whatever. So is it necessarily his job to unite the party? He's just one person. The party does have a leadership of sorts. Isn't that duty on the leadership to make sure that the party puts his house in order as opposed to one man who has a ticket and wants to run on the platform of the party? I'm trying to understand. Please make it make sense. Well, right now we've elected him as, a, as our party's candidate and he's the leader of the party. Right now he's protecting Mr. Ayu with acts and giving reasons why Ayu should leave. But if he is defending Mr. Ayu. We're showing him reasons and why Ayu is unfit to lead the party right now. We cannot be asking Nigerians to allow us to govern. And all we bring is a leadership that's so corrupt, so dirty, that we can show reasons why the chairman is not fit to remain as chairman. We insist that he leaves. If he doesn't, you're going to hear a lot of things in the next 24 hours. A lot of us will leave the party. A lot of us may even do things that may not add or help the unity of the party. Mr. Ayochayu is not fit to continue staying at his seat as chairman of the PDP. We have said that he is very corrupt. The people have not heard or agreed. Today, now you're having an internal implosion in the National Working Committee. So if the NWC is this imploding, who do you want to lead? Mm. Mr. Ayotayu, we insist, should lead. We believe he's very corrupt. If he's denying it, let him give us reasons why he's sharing this kind of money to members of the party when he's not been able to do a single thing. It's not purchased a single nail to add to the construction of our national secretariat. So oh. since he came, all he's been doing is to use his chairmanship to pretend like the chairmanship is at all people's home. It's not a retirement benefit. No. Mr. Ayashayu should leave the PDP and allow the PDP to have peace. The okay. PDP cannot be united to go for campaigns with a chairman as bad as he is. Now that we've shown him internally why he's unfit to remain as chairman, the right thing for him to do is to go. Those who want to keep him there as chairman should see that if we are asking Nigerians to give us the strength to lead the country, we cannot lead the country okay. with the chairman this day. We cannot lead the country with a party that's corrupt. Okay. We cannot lead Nigeria when we are this divided. We cannot lead Nigeria when we cannot stand together as one. Okay. Currently, under Mr. Ayotayo, our party right now is fragmented into four different factions. Okay, let me, let me, a, let me ask this question. Mr. because Mr. Ayotayo is on feet to remain you, as you, you keep saying that if, since he doesn't want to leave the party, we're showing him 
why he should leave the party. So are you telling me on national TV that the Southern Caucus does have a hand in the trials of Mr. Yocha Ayu? Are you witch hunting the chairman because you want him to leave that seat? The Southern Caucus are only presenting to Nigerians reasons why we think Mr. Ayo Chayu is unfit to continue to stay as chairman of the PDP. Well, now you've seen these present issues are coming from internally, from the members of the National Working Committee. It is not the Southern Caucus. You're seeing this particular reform that was done yesterday was done by members from all across the country. The National Working Committee today is divided. And you cannot have a divided National Working Committee guide the PDP towards election campaigns and victory. Mr. Ayo Chayu is not fit to remain as chairman. We've asked him to resign. He's not agreed to resign. Okay. Members of National Working Committee are now beginning to tell the country and the world that Mr. Ayo Chayu cannot continue to lead them. And as an example, they have shown how very corrupt he is. Our national secretariat is not completed. How can Mr. Ayotayu be wasting our money? He's not contributed to buying of a single nail okay. to add to the sustained construction of the national secretariat, and he is sharing money this way. We cannot have this kind of corrupt man Okay. to sit as chairman, and you now think we should go for election. Nigerians will not accept the PDP if we are this corrupt. But what we already see now is, uh, like you said, it's imploding from within. We're seeing a divided party. We're seeing different segments of the party. There are those who are on the Gopno Wiki side of the divide, and then those who support uh, Yocha Ayu. How do you think that this... This problem that the party is facing, this imbroglio, will rub off on the PDP going into campaign season and, of course, the elections proper. Um, I mean, how do you think this will, this, this will affect the party? Because, well, it, does, because it doesn't really right look now, like your child you wants to step down. So going into this season, what, what, what should we expect? Well, I don't know. It's right now the party is a broken house. The party is divided, and as you remember, a house divided cannot stand. Any house divided when challenge falls. We believe Mr. Ayo Chayu is not the right man to lead the PDP going into elections. We believe right now the PDP is broken. A house broken falls. No house divided ever stands as one. And we believe because of Mr. Ayo Chayu's bad leadership, the PDP today is so challenged that if we go to election, we're calling to come at a distant turn. And we believe this prognosis, you look at the Bloomberg poll, pulls and told. A pose after pose pulls the PDP at a toll. And we believe part of these reasons is due to the poor leadership that we have with Mr. Ayo Chai. Mr. Ayo Chayu is no good. And right now, the PDP seems very unprepared for elections because it does not have a proper leadership at the top. Mr. Ayo Chayu, remain as chairman, makes the PDP look like a headless chicken. Okay. And we do not think it's proper that we go to an election looking like headless chicken. Mr. Fine. Ayo Chayu is so corrupt, we don't trust him. And when you now see Inside the National Working Committee, a vote of no confidence. Quickly, I just want to ask a question, finally. Um, many people have also um, accused the Governor Wiki faction of courting the opposition APC um, and being allowed to, or allowing themselves to be used by the opposition to scatter the party. Can you tell me that you and, of course, those of you who are in the caucus are not courting the opposition party, being that you seem to be um, unhappy with what's happening within your party, finally? Well, as you know, I am from Southern Nigeria, so that makes me automatically a member of the Southern Caucus. 
I agree wholeheartedly with the demands of Satan Caucus that Mr. Ayotayo should resign and leave and allow somebody from the South to take over. Mr. Ayotayo right now is part of those who want to sustain nepotism in the PDP. We don't want that. We want members of the party from the South to feel a sense of inclusion in the Doyen zone in the PDP. Are you courting members of the APC? The I ask a very simple question. Are you courting members of the APC? Are you in talks with the APC? This is an allegation I would like for you to clear the air on. Are members of the Southern Caucus eyeing the APC? Are you being used by the APC to cause trouble within the PDP as opposed to uh, putting, putting your house together? In closing. Well, you should understand that the APC is in worse shape than the PDP. So <laughs> you don't jump from frying pan to fire. The APC, as I speak to you right now, its candidate is in hospital in Europe, and we here is now wearing a catheter. And you know what that means? That means he passes urine. He cannot stand erect without holding himself. So the APC is not an option. The APC currently is in tatters. The APC is currently is not even an option for Nigeria. We members of the Satan Caucus are simply trying to make our voice heard. Please do not listen to such rhetoric and such accusations okay. that we are in league with the APC. Okay. The APC is not an option for Nigeria. Okay. Well, uh, Dr. Kaj, I want to say thank you. Unfortunately, our time is fast spent. Kaj Anunaju is a public affairs analyst, and he's also an economist, also a member of the Southern Caucus in the People's Democratic Party. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you very much for having me. All right. And that's it on Plus Politics tonight. Of course, it's the weekend, but we cannot leave you without giving you the highlights of all of the shows that we've had all through this week. And don't forget, tomorrow, Nigeria will be marking its independence. What will you be doing? Well, don't forget to stay loyal to Nigeria. Go get your PVC and get ready to cast your votes come 2023. I'm Mary Anakon. Have a great evening. So it is not sufficient for us to say that somebody who just came and you have not been able to examine him, you do not have his history, and you will now say, okay, let us now ask this person. Because, for example, like I just gave an analogy, you cannot give your vehicle to a driver that you are not sure of his driving skill and you are not sure of his ability to navigate the road. And you can only know this via the experience that you have. And experience is what we have been talking about. Okay. We now have a candidate who has not even had an experience or is an history of one more standing in the party. So-called political party in Nigeria that has a, a, what they call is it, a, what do they cabal? The so-called political parties that before a, a new entrant enters into the poli uh, political party, you have to go through some form of initiation or the, the initiation that you must know the person that knows somebody and knows somebody and all that they, the chain continues. That cannot qualify as a political party. Political party remains a vehicle through which uh, the citizens, citizens uses to enthrone or to extend their mandate to to uh, uh, fellow citizens who will uh, 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 be in charge of the reins of power and ensure that the so-called demo, uh, uh, democratic dividend comes to them. But that's not what we are seeing. Okay. They have even, the political parties in Nigeria have even isolated Nigerians. They now have click. Once it is, look at the board of uh, trustees, look at the, uh, those that are the officials, can a non, a, a, an unknown person be elected to those positions? No unknown person can be elected, and especially and particularly with the big, the so-called big political parties in Nigeria. Okay. Nobody will be asked you, ah, there, you cannot be elected, except one of the so-called cabals uh, 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 chooses you or uh, has interest in you. 
Is mm. that a political party? Citizens having the, 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 the digital literacy to know what to share. Before you share, how do you confirm it? Um, every citizen needs to be fact checkers. We need to acquire a certain level of digital literacy that not everything that look like that, that shines like gold is gold. I mean, not everything that shines is gold. I mean, the, the, the dramatic expression. So what is important, going to 2023 election, people need to know that fake news will destabilize. In fact, I used this, cons this narrative somewhere. I'm going to put it now that if fake news can burn down Nigeria, beyond what you just talked about just now, about the Photoshop, with a simple digital tool like um, Google reverse image search, you can easily discontinue that picture. Mm. But most people, because of the political sensitivity, because of their biases, because of their orientation, what we call confirmation bias, once you don't like the candidate, you are, you are tempted. In fact, you're not even tempted. You love it to share it. Not everything, because at some point, it is going to target your own candidate. And the way it is, is to say, any pictures or, 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 or messages you receive on, on social media, particularly on WhatsApp, the E2E, the end-to-end -end description, in, in, encryption, we, you need to ask the person who sent it to you, excuse me, what's, where's the source of this? Mm. It is a CNN, like that one that was trending. See, CNN is public, it's so global. Go on CNN and search and be sure that it's correct. And if it is fake, go back to the person who shared it and say, why are you sharing fake news? What's your problem? Advise the fellow. You are actually demarketing your candidate when you try always to to peddle fake news against your opponent. And